in the session uh, let's uh, limit our discussion to the last gear of the topic gears where we will discuss the warm gear in this session i will give you some uh, basic introduction to this topic and uh, will be followed by the design procedure now uh, like in the given the figure you can easily understand the meaning of a warm gear so we have basically a pinion which is of thread type for and followed by a gear this gear is nothing but a spark gear so this is this portion is called as the wheel and this portion is called as the worm usually worm consists of threads single start double start triple start like that it is being specified in terms of threads so uh, unless uh, like the previous uh, gears we cannot have a number of teeth z1 in the pinion here the pinion will be specified using the number of start z1 now uh, basic introduction introductory part consists of uh, this consists of a worm and a gear uh, and what is the function of this where we are going to use this the main answer is that when we want to have a reduction of more than 10 or if we, if we want to have a velocity variation reduction ratio greater than 10 we cannot go for any kind of gears that we have learned previously in that case we have the only option we have is the warm and warm wheel so warm wheel are mainly used for higher velocity ratio or power transmission ratios more than 10 that's how it is being specified and also it is used to connect non intersecting shaft which are usually at 90 degrees so uh, if you look, look closely look at this particular figure it, it can be easily understood that uh, they are not intersecting but uh, the shaft are basically 90 degree apart and the meshing is a combination so means the when the meshing happens to the uh, the worm engages with the wheel uh, that process is basically by the sliding and rolling of the pair the the worm slides over the wheel also there is a rolling action happening so these are the uh, two basic basic action that is happening in a worm and a worm wheel so for looking on this the figure of a worm and a worm wheel it, uh, it, it is having close resemblance with the closed helical gear but comparing with the closed helical gear the uh, load carrying capacity and the torque transmitting capacity is very much higher when we compare compare this with the closed helical gear now moving forward to the different types of worm gear uh, you may not notice this type of classification in any uh, textbooks but uh, you should know what exactly are the type of worm gears so basically worm gears are of three types one is non enveloping type non enveloping type means we have a very simple cylindric this is called as a cylindrical type of uh, worm this cylindrical type of worm is engaging with a normal type of spur gear that is called as a non enveloping type of uh, worm gear and it is having a cylindrical worm mesh uh, with a standard spur gear and the, uh, another important point is that uh, when this kind of non enveloping type of worm gear is used the point of contact is only a single you can have only a single point of contact and this is not at all suited for the higher load transmission this is basically used for the uh, communication systems or transmission systems and some instruments you might have noticed um, uh, uh, this kind of uh, non enveloping type of worm gears on guitar or any or something like that string tightening string now to tighten the string you have an a system of a non enveloping type of worm gear followed by that we have got two different category one is the single enveloping type and second one is the double enveloping type uh, uh, this single enveloping type and double enveloping type should be understood should be uh, understood in a proper manner because uh, it is purely based upon the uh, way it is constructed so basically it is having a hourglass type of construction hourglass means this 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 figure gives you the information about what is a hourglass so the worm is being constructed like this the shape of the worm will be like this so in a single enveloping type you have a hourglass type worm with a standard spark gear and for double enveloping you have this hourglass worm and throated gear is there 
So if you closely look at this bar gear, you can see that there is a slight curve given to the uh, face of the uh, spur gear, a slight curve. This slight curve is called as the envelope, uh, this uh, throttled gear. And uh, moving uh, to understand, if you want to understand this uh, three types clearly, you can refer this figure. Can you look here? You can see that, see, this is a cylindrical type of uh, spur uh, bomb it is engaging with a flat type of or a normal type of spark gear and if you look at the second figure you can see that there is a slight curve in the or a hourglass type of construction for the worm but still uh, your worm gear wheel is of the standard type now moving into the double enveloping type you can see that your gear as well as your uh, worm both are having some curvature so the main advantage of uh, the using of a single enveloping or double enveloping is that when we use a standard type of worm and worm wheel uh, there is only a single pair of teeth which are in contact but when we go to the single enveloping type or double enveloping type the contact ratio is uh, more than 2.26 that means at a time uh, if you look at this particular figure or any figure you can see that more than uh, two teeth are in contact so obviously the load carrying capacity will be higher the load will be shared among the teeth so the life of the teeth will be also high so such kind of advantages are there for single uh, enveloping type and double enveloping type obviously it has got its own limitations but anyway we, our design will be purely based upon the non uh, enveloping type of uh, spar gear sorry uh, worm and worm wheel now coming to the advantage it has got very high uh, reduction ratios it has a self locking property that is one of the highlighting property of this worm and worm uh, worm gear and because of the compact compactness of the system we, we can say that the weight is low and the sm it is smooth and the uh, operation is a bit uh, noiseless and coming to the disadvantages obviously we know that sliding and rolling is happening there in the system and because of that itself uh, we can expect high friction and uh, you can expect a very huge heat uh, uh, generation due to the sliding and rolling also you have to compensate the loss of power all those things and all these high friction and heat generation are highly related to the efficiency so uh, the design of uh, in a design of worm gear the efficiency matters because we have to calculate what is the efficiency of this gear and moving forward we have to discuss about the mode of failure in a gear drives this is not just uh, applicable for the worm and worm wheel this is applicable for all the other type of uh, gears because the failure mode is uh, one of the same so the usual or commonly classified uh, type of failures are wear, uh, failure by wear, surface fatigue and plastic flu, breakage and associated gear failures. So if we closely look at this uh, wear or the failure uh, using wear, uh, we can say that uh, various different uh, other types of different types of wears failures are being classified under this uh, wear. So uh, moderate wear you can expect you can have a, a critical wear or a extreme wear condition you can have abrasive wear uh, you can have corrosive wear you can have scoring uh, issues uh, all these things are being listed under the uh, wear so all these type of failures can be expected in a gear tweak and moving forward with the surface fatigue fatigue this is mainly ha this is mainly due to the high uh, load variation or the stress cycles that is on the happening on the uh, teeth of the gear so a surface fatigue consists of uh, pitting failures uh, it can uh, be of stalling type or it can be of micro pitting or it can be cra case crushing uh, these are the common um, failure modes that is observed in the uh, gear and it is listed under the surface fatigue uh, when it comes to the case of a pl plastic flow uh, we have to consider the uh, cold flow rolling and peening uh, rippling mm. and uh, ridging all these things has to be considered under the uh, uh, plastic flues 
and breakage uh, will consist of uh, the overhead uh, overload sorry over overload breakage or the random fracture all this will be uh, coming under the uh, breakages when associated uh, gear failures uh, seems like a general term used but this associated gear failures are also has some classifications under that uh, the pinching cracks develop in the system the grinding cracks the rim and web type of failures uh, electric current damages all these things are listed under the associated gear failure so if you uh, consider all these uh, key, uh, keywords and if you if you search you can easily get the explanation for the all the different um, types of failures that i have explained anyway i'm not going into the details because uh, that's not the the purpose of this uh, class so i will be purely focusing on the design of the worm and the mm -hmm. worm um, gear and moving into the design procedure two three things you have to keep in your mind uh, one is that see this design uh, is being done uh, based upon the design procedure that we have learned for the previous uh, gears but the issue is that the pinion is not a tooth type it is a thread type so uh, obviously the equations are uh, going to change a lot but we can follow the same design procedure even though it has got an alternative design procedure that is going to be explained towards the end of this uh, slide or the last slide i will explain but anyway uh, we will uh, try to design a worm and a worm wheel using the conventional design procedure that we have uh, learned for solving the or designing the uh, uh, spur helical and b1 gear so the initial step is the identification of weaker member see for a worm uh, there is no need to identify the weaker member because obviously the gear is going to be the weaker member so the thread is continuous so the worm is always be the stronger member when we consider repair so we have to design the spur gear which is nothing but the worm wheel so when you take the uh, gear ratio z2 by z1 z1 can be 1 2 3 or 4 single start means one thread is starting double start you can see here when you consider a single start the pitch is equal to lead which is the distance successive distance between two points and lead is the distance advanced for one rotation so a single start you can see that the pitch and lead are on the same but when you go for the double start you can see that uh, the lead is twice that of the pitch and obviously uh, the ratio is going to change for the three start or four start and all those things so is there one is not the number of teeth it is uh, called as the number of start so we will be designing only for the worm wheel the spur gear so the equations are also same for us that of this spur gear so we have to calculate the tangential tooth load using this equation if velocity is not provided uh, you, have, you have to get or the center distance or the diameter is not specified you have to get the value of 15 times of m followed by the lewis equation sigma 2 uh, cv b y by m all these things and uh, sigma we will be using the value of weaker member y is nothing but uh, pi into small y this is capital y not small y uh, small y is a lewis form factor uh, for the worm wheel uh, this lewis form factor can easily be taken from the table 12.28 which is given on the right hand side you can see that for different type of uh, pressure angles alpha uh, uh, you can have the value of uh, y value is not need to go for the other calculation now after uh, substituting all these things uh, you can get the value of uh, this lewis form factor in terms of m cube cv and you all are very familiar to solve this m cube cv equation by the methodology of uh, trial and error method so you can easily get the module you can uh, cross check it with the standard modules available there in your data handbook so up to here there is no issue there is nothing uh, to worry about followed by the dimension of the gear see the, for the dimension of the gear you have to calculate the d1 d2 uh, the uh, tan gamma gamma values all those things we have to calculate uh, anyway I, i will explain all these things uh, while we solve a problem okay so from here onwards that means after the step number 4 even though we are calculating the dynamic load and wear load Uh, this calculation that means the calculation of dynamic load and wear load are not that much significant 
in the case of a worm gear so worm is purely uh, after this uh, finding the module and after finding the dimensions the major weightage is given for the efficiency and the heat generations and dissipations and also you are supposed to calculate the wear load and dynamic load also there is no uh, issue in that definitely you have to calculate but more than more important is given to the efficiency and the uh, uh, heat generated dissipated calculations so now let us see um, what are the, these are the basic equations for the dynamic load and wear load it's very simple and one uh, change you have to note here is that wear load see in the previous design procedure we have equated the fw and the ft and uh, uh, finally we can find the value of k and by find plus by using the value of k we conclude the design with the hardness for the pinion and the gear but that is not the case here here you have to take the value of k from the table 12.30 uh, kindly go to the table 12.20 uh, there you can easily um, get the value of uh, k based upon the uh, value of 12.3 in the table 12.36 um, 12.36 is mainly uh, it's not not 12.36 it's 12.30 uh, in 12.30 uh, what is given is the various load stress factor and it is given for various material we can have the load stress factor for uh, gamma ranging from 10 to 12 uh, 0 to 10 degrees gamma ranging from 10 to 25 like that different columns are there you can select the value of k directly from there and substitute it here and compare this value with the dynamic load but this is actually not that important these two steps are not that important for the worm gear and another method of calculating the wear load is using this equation this is also provided in your data handbook some textbooks have used this equation for the calculation this is equation number 12.62b not 12.62b yeah 12.62b that is the equation so uh, we have to calculate the value of the gamma and all those things that i will explain by using a data handbook because if i am going to uh, tell uh, in the slide that is going to make you confused so um, but i will explain that using the data handbook how you will calculate the value of gamma all those things now moving forward uh, we have to calculate the efficiency now let us discuss the calculation of efficiency heat generation heat dissipation this is the three final step okay uh, let us discuss this uh, these three step using the data handbook that will be more comfortable for you now see when we look here you can see that uh, when we go to the yes yes this is the uh, chapter for the worm and worm gear the uh, some equations you have to be very uh, clear with one is this one uh, the pitch uh, pc is equal to p2 okay pc is equal to p2 okay so this equation need to be used now another equation which is of very importance is equation number 12.46 this equation is very important because uh, diameters can be calculated using or the gamma value of tan gamma just before the uh, this data handbook i have told you the calculation of gamma so gamma is calculated using this equation and moving forward with this see center distance can be calculated in two ways using 12.47 a and uh, another equation is the relationship between d1 and central distance that is 12.51 a okay so <coughs> now let us go to the wear load calculation and we will discuss that okay this is the equation i told about the wear load d2 b k and or else you can use this equation a cos gamma into cv into sigma c by cs I think there is no need to discuss about the C, V and C, S and Sigma. What we need to discuss is about A and cos gamma. So, A is nothing but H, D1 and Psi divided by 57.3. H, D1 and Psi has to be calculated. So, how will you calculate that? H can be calculated using the table. C 
see here that can easily be calculated not here yes here this table table 12.26 H can easily be calculated either in terms of PC or in terms of module. So if you have the module, definitely you can uh, calculate the value of H very easily. Now, uh, in this table, uh, you have to calculate some important uh, terms. One is uh, this uh, D1, definitely you have to calculate. LW is another important term. H is an important term. These two terms you should calculate while you carry out your design. So when we move back to the design uh, section uh, we can see that here so you have for calculating the gamma value you have to use equation d1 has to be obtained and module we already have z1 is usually taken as 1 and if you have these three values you can calculate the value of gamma that is very important calculation and now we have to discuss about the uh, heat generation and dissipation and heat generation before going into that we have to discuss about the efficiency efficiency of the gearing that is very important see the equation that we use for calculating the efficiency is this the last equation brad formula this one this is the equation that we are going to use so we have already calculated the value of gamma mu is the coefficient of friction we have to assume or else is given or else then we can be taken from the table also we have a table i think in your data handbook we have a table uh, to refer with the value for the values of a mu i think it is there if it is not there you can consider it as a very low value like 0.0 no you have you can have the value of mu yes there is an equation given here in the data handbook look here see the coefficient of friction can be calculated using these two equations based upon the value of velocity you can select 12.60 a or 12.60 b so first for that you have to calculate the value of vr vr can be calculated using this equation see pi d1 and 1 divided by 1000 into cos gamma gamma we have already calculated the only unknown value is vr so we can easily calculate vr based upon the value of vr you can calculate the value of mu that is the well, uh, mu value or coefficient of friction you have to consider while you design so once you have the value of mu uh, if you look here you can easily calculate the value of efficiency so gamma you have mu you have you can substitute it here and you can get the value of efficiency and after calculating the efficiency you are supposed to uh, go for the calculation of heat generated and uh, dissipated okay for calculation of heat generation and dissipation for generation uh, you can calculate the use equation 12.63 a mu f n v r divided by cos gamma you have the value of v r you have the value of gamma the only unknown parameter is v sorry f n f n is the normal force see the normal force can be calculated using this equation using this equation if you consider the last two terms the last two terms the sine theta will get cancelled out f n is equal to f t divided by cos theta cos gamma minus mu into sine gamma so using this relation you can calculate the value of uh, uh, normal force f n ok you want to have the value of f n you can directly go to the calculation of the heat generation and the heat dissipated can be calculated using the equation uh, q is equal to 1000 into k w into 1 minus eta so or else you can use this equation so both both are 12.63 c also you can use where which considers the area of the um, worm uh, considers the area of the wheel uh, and the temperature the either of these two equations 12.63 b or c both can be uh, considered for the for solving and th that is how we conclude design but you have to do some uh, different type of calculation here and also when you solve this equation for uh, fn you can see that a new term theta has come into picture so this theta has to be calculated using this relation relation 12.56 d this one 12.56 this relation you have to use 
and you have to get the value of theta alpha is nothing but the pressure angle okay now uh, the question is how will you get the value of lead angle so in order to get the value of lead angle uh, you should have um, uh, lead angle uh, you can use uh, uh, refer the data handbook because in the data handbook uh, you have uh, a table 12 point uh, um, 28 in the page number 244 there you can have different lead angles based upon the pressure angle so if they specify the pressure angle you can easily directly take the value of uh, lead angle gamma from there so once you have the value of d gamma you can move forward okay and uh, when you when you consider this equation of fn uh, not here okay this is fn uh, somewhere we are supposed to use the uh, half phase angle all those things anyway this is how we carry out the design uh, compared to the previous questions uh, it will take some more time to understand because uh, the compound itself is different so uh, kindly spend some time to understand the design uh, problem and uh, before you start solving something and uh, this is how you will calculate the heat generation dissipation like i said before we have an another alternative method this alternative method is not at all uh, familiar or similar to the uh, methodology that we follow followed right now or it is something different that means initially if the diameters are, are given or not given uh, we will be calculating using the equation 12.51a 47a and 12.68a and uh, the tangential load is being calculated d1 and the tangential load is being calculated using this equation ft is equal to 2 into mt divided by 2 and for getting these values uh, it is substituted in terms of 2 pi nt power p is equal to 2 pi nt so from there uh, we can calculate the value of mt mt is nothing but the amount of torque transmitted so using that mb you can find the value of ft that is also a possible scenario so after this calculation of mt uh, sorry ft uh, what we are supposed to do is no, this is look here the mobile uh, the module uh, 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 we have to find the uh, module using the lewis equation so to use the lewis equation we need the value of ft that ft we can find it out like this that's how that's what i have explained right now so once again kindly follow this see ft can be obtained using this equation 2 mt divided by d2 so that means if you want to use this equation d1 and d2 should be readily available in our hands so in order to get the value of mt we will be using the conventional equation 2 pi nt by 60 from there that torque is nothing but mt and this ft has to be substituted here for the uh, lewis equation and uh, b is uh, we can be calculated using uh, two equations so either you can use it as 10m or else you can use this equation 12.64 that is also possible that is one another methodology for solving the uh, warm gears and after that we will calculate the lead angle using the equation 12.46h in the previous question the lead angle was be selected from a table but here we are calculating lead angle using the equation 12.46 h so 12.46 h means here this is the equation equation given on the page 2 to 1 equation number 12.46 this is the equation that we are going to use for the calculation also uh, the pitch can be calculated using this i have already explained so you by using this equation we will be finding the value of lead angle and uh, for after this step we will be everything remains same that means the dynamic load wear load efficiency and the calculation of everything remains the same uh, i know that this uh, designing of warm gear is a uh, bit more confusing when compared to that of the gear anyway 
uh, let us uh, discuss a problem in the next class uh, based upon this distance uh, this this same procedure i think uh, that is going to give you more insight rather than uh, listening to this uh, slides okay so now let us uh, solve a problem from the uh, worm gear and after that uh, you will be uh, able to understand the design of this very clearly uh, and kindly go through all the figures and uh, try to understand the significance of uh, worm gear and this is uh, have a lot of application in transfer systems many industries everywhere this is being applied so this is a very important type of worm gear uh, type of gear is the worm gear so kindly study uh, spend some time to study the worm gear thank you